Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. How often do you guys play as a support character in other games? I feel like Destiny lacks the items and weapons in games to offer us some more better options for going all out supportive. Like how about we get an aspect that allows us to revive a teammate but it requires all our abilities and has a high cooldown to it. Or maybe one that focuses on providing an energy drone that grants increased damage reduction, increased speed and increased super regeneration etc just to allies. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section below, I'd be interested to hear what you say. Anyways, today's build focuses on a supportive debuff build designed around weakening enemies no matter where you are. It's a fun build that will be using Aeon Soul and Dermatistic Chaos so if you've ever wanted to do a build based around the two then now's the perfect time to listen up. Let's start with a general aim and the of the build our aim is to maximise how much debuff potential we can get when facing bosses and enemies alike. We also have the secondary effect of showcasing two exotics everyone sleeps on. For this, we will be using Aeon Soul and Dermatistic Chaos. A star with our exotic armour, Aeon Soul, with its exotic effect, Sector of Force, it states Activating the buff on an elite or mini boss or stunning a champion marks them for 30 seconds. Mark duration cannot be refreshed. Marked enemies are highlighted for allies and take 20% increased damage from them. Damage increases stacks with everything. I have covered this exotic and subsection before in game and I think now is the perfect time to cover them again. Although they only work against powerful enemies, this is generally fine as the build will be using the harder content such as GMs, raids, nightfalls, etc. Getting a 20% debuff for 30 seconds is quite a lot and combining this with whatever you're running with should allow us to mop up the more powerful enemies with little effort. Our second exotic is the Dermatistic Chaos with this exotic effect, Vexadecimal, which states Strong against barrier champions, while holding down the trigger, every fourth heavy metal projectile also weakens targets on impact. This machine gun has had its ups and downs and not many people are interested in giving it a try ever since Bungie updated it. It will now weaken targets first before landing its volatile rounds after, which is something many players have mentioned should be done first like always. Now the weapon feels like it's in a better place and spot compared to before and I added it to my collection as it's suitable for the build. Only weakness to the weapon is its magazine size of 48 which can be troublesome down the line but since we are weakening everything, we should be able to maintain our weapons usage a tad bit longer, including with the reserves added. For aspects and fragments, we then have the following. Feed the Void, where getting an ability kill will grant you Devour. Helion, where casting your class ability will produce a certain water that scorches targets and can also ignite them. Vassal Grace, where defeating targets with connect weapons will grant you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super will grant you and allies bonus transcendence energy. Fazzle Dominance, where your Void Grenades weaken targets, where your Arc Grenades jolts them. Fazzle Solitude, where landing multiple precision hits emits a severing blast for the target, weakening their damage output. Fazzle Balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants melee energy, rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy. And Fazzle Hope, where while having an elemental buff, your class BD regenerates quickly. A strong set of fragments are being used to fully delve into the supportive nature of the build. We are lucky that Bungie has given us quite a bit of material to use to at least create a comprehensible build for endgame. A fast or solitude is going to be handy for the overall weakening of enemies, from weapon damage to outright weakened body. This links up with our Aeon Souls effect for that nice wombo combo. Fazzle Dominance is going to debuff anything we attach to it and will act similar to our heavy machine gun with its effects as well. Then of course, Grace, Balance and Hope share their usage of increased performance just from using the build in general. The fragments and aspects are cleverly designed to encapsulate what we are aiming for. I would also advise you to use your Solar Super for its outreaching effect and also use the Penundral Blast for the quick freezing effect it can have against most enemies. For the modern stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No resistance mods have been added, as I don't think this will be necessary this time round, but adding a Harmonic Resistance mod and taking off a Reserve mod 
may be more useful to you than me. The discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via vortex grenades. Storm and vortex are both pretty powerful grenades to use when you pair them up with facet of dominance. With this being the case, vortex is much more better here for the outright debuff is applying to all enemies within this given AoE. As long as you have Feed the Void active, you should be fine with his current cooldown rate, as we don't have much to invest in the high stats so much more. However, with how the build is set up, you shouldn't worry too much in terms of relying on it all the time. I would now recommend you add these extra mods though, just to help you out a bit more. Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% MIDI buff, Bolstering Destination times 1 for a 12% Class Ability buff, Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% Grenade buff, Outreach for a 12% MIDI cooldown, and Distribution for a 4% All Ability cooldown will be good enough for the build. Then we have the additional mods, here are the following. Ashes to Assets for granting Super Energy via Grenade Kills, Heavy Ammo Finder, Reserves and Scavenger mods for a heavy weapon, Kinetic Siphon for creating auto power via Kinetic Weapons, Charged Up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1, Kinetic Weapon Surge times 2 for a 17% Kinetic Weapon buff, and Powerful Attraction for automatically collecting all the power when using our class ability. So as we have covered our exotic heavy weapon, I will then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. These are all optional but do hold some benefits towards the build. So for the primary, we have the Blast Furnace with Connect Tremors and Rapid Hit. A primary will vary from player to player, as you will need a good ranged weapon that is both accurate and damaging against all. The Blast Furnace is perfect for this, as its perks are pretty good to run with, and its accuracy for landing precision hits are also noticeable to the naked eye. A good alternative, if you don't like pulses, will be the Hung Jury. This weapon can come with a varied amount of perks that I believe is much more easier for new players to invest in overall. Secondary, we then have Posterity with 4th times the charm and Demolitionist. Ideally, sticking with the theme of the build in case we can't use our primary once more, our secondary will allow us to maintain a A1 Soul effect for extended time frame while also granting us extra grenade energy. This weapon is required for completing this corresponding raid, which not everyone can do, so I would advise you to pick something more smaller and faster instead, just in case for the more close quarter encounters, like a sidearm or a fusion rifle, are generally good. Although not everything in our kit is tied down to debuffing everything, it can still be said how the build functions pretty well with the items it has in the hand. Aeon Soul's Sector Force ability is unique enough that pretty much any build can focus on debuffing enemies as long as you trigger its main activation rate. For this, you only need to land rapid position hits on a powerful enemy, and from there, they'll get an easy 20% debuff for 30 seconds. Now we can add to this further by applying Facet or Dominance, Vortex Grenades effect for that sweet debuff as well, or we can apply the Dermatistic Chaos with its heavy metal effect, and the Facet or Solitude fragment to also generally outright weaken enemies. This sounds like a lot to take on, but it doesn't require too much thought or action for the user to enact and remember to do one after another. As long as you are activating one of the four ways to deep of enemies, everything else tends to fall in place from there. With how Destiny has designed the game and build as well, you generally do not need a lot to do crazy damage with the amount of stuff you have available in game. But say you're a player who enjoys support builds the most, like me, you would want something more simple and fun to use that make taking on powerful enemies a lot more easier for you outright, right? Well, this is why this sort of build will be good for those who are running GMs, mass raids, hard dungeons, in groups, or solo play. The build excels in what it does best, which is to weaken everything and make everyone's lives so much more easier. But following this build and using exactly what I have will give you that satisfaction of being a true support main with an ideal goal and weapons to boot. Generally, what more could you ask for here? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. Dim link for the builds located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.